Semi Solutions, Nasty Plans, Semi's Podcast. That's why we say we got the down snoo snoo Nasty Plans. Yeah, you're listening to us, you're getting all snoo snooey. Put the Nasty Plans on. Yeah, put in your ear bones. Now slap some down. You get the Nasty Plans. What you got? I got that down. down. Every down. Snoo snoo. Every damn down. I got the snoo snoo. You're gonna snoo snoo it up. I got the snoo snoo. Yeah, you got that snoo snoo. I got the snoo snoo. The tattoo is gonna say down snoo snoo nasty blast right on across my back. Uh. All right. Okay. Hey. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. My name is Ashkan. I am Graham. And we have our robot helper with us today. <laughs> yep. But he doesn't have a mouth, so. Or a name. <laughs> it's like a proper robot. <laughs> uh, if you're a robot listening to this in the future, I, that yeah, was a joke. Really yeah, we're, we're totally Please down with robots. Don't kill us. Um, <laughs> we, so we have, we're supposed to say stuff now. We've got an important announcement. Yep. Final episode coming up in just a tiny, tiny bit. Just super, just a right around the corner. nudge away from what it is Couple right days now. Away, yep. Yeah. The uh, 29th, we are doing a two-hour live call-in show. Yep, you can call in live for two hours. And, and we'll be there. Yeah, you you shouldn't... We we're not going to talk to you specifically for two hours. Other people will be involved. kind of unfair yeah. to other people, but we'll talk to you for like a couple minutes. Yeah, maybe yeah. even like 10 or something. But yeah, something like that, 10, 15. Yeah, 20. 30. <laughs> in a couple hours. A couple hours, two, three, <laughs> four hours, yeah. So 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific time, yep. November 29th. Yeah. Join us. Anywhere that the internet exists. Be one with us. And... We got a question in the meantime. Nice. For today, which is mm. how detailed are your financial records? What are Oh boy. What do they mean? This person's on to us, huh? <laughs> because shoebox isn't it's not supposed <laughs> this, this an IRS agent. Is this an audit? <laughs> is this how we get audited? <laughs> Podcast form. <laughs> Be careful how you answer. <laughs> Send reply with this form on air. <laughs> um they're cool. I mean, they're like... Pretty detailed, yeah. Yeah, sort of. I mean, you can... I think with finances, you can really go to a kind of like maddening level of depth. Yeah. And it's it's worthwhile at that some drive point you crazy, yeah. to, to pull back a little bit, right? And be like, okay, maybe I don't need to know exactly like... Uh, I don't know, like how much how much money I save switching from giving everyone one Q-tip to, like, one and a half Q-tips. I mean, uh-huh. That sounds kind of useful. What? <laughs> we really like data, so it's going to be hard for Ashcon to argue against it right now. There's simple things to categorize, and then there's other things that are just going to take a lot of your time and may not be worth it. I mean, so there's stuff we buy all the time as a float center. We have supplies, right? We have, we have uh, earplugs, we have petroleum jelly, we have all that sort of stuff. So you can decide to track those individually. So this is kind of like... You're talking about in some sort of accounting software like QuickBooks, what are you categorizing things into? Do you yep, take no. all those expenses and just call them float supplies? Or do you literally track them under earplugs, petroleum jelly, Q-tips, et cetera? Yep, and that's called your chart of accounts, generally, mm-hmm. is what you're dividing things into. And yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to have data on every single thing, but when it comes down to it, there's... So there's infinite stuff to do as a small business owner. Yeah. You will never get to your entire list of things. So you really have to start questioning when it's worth more of your time in order to get to that really finite level of detail. So we're yeah. somewhere in between. Like we're more in the float supplies category of people. And and you know, there's also I think there's a point to realize when some of this information is like your kind of gut feeling is good enough. Like, you kind of know about how fast you go through your plugs and how much a box costs. And if you see different earplugs for $10 less, you can get a hunch about how much money that's going to save you a year. You know, you don't have to be like, let's go to the graphs and like try to actually do this this thing where you specifically like, oh, $107.14. Like, yeah. I, I, I think there is there's a certain simplicity to what we're doing that allows you to, even if you're not tracking it in your expense software, you could still like make informed business decisions. I mean, and, you know, on a, on a broader scale, if you're a giant company that's a huge chain with 10,000 locations, if you find a way to save 20 bucks a month 
all of a sudden you're saving like a couple hundred thousand or yeah, a couple hundred thousand. I did that math, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we don't have the same economies of scale for being a small business with only one spot. So, you know, saving $20 a month is not going to make a huge difference in the realm of the float tank world. Like we all know what costs the most in, in the float tank world, which is paying us and paying our staff. Yeah. And that's such a huge portion of the costs other than things like ordering salt in bulk and some ongoing expenses rent. that, yeah, right, rent. It so overshadows those little things that you just have to kind of ask yourself about the sanity of getting too detailed with a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I mean, keeping track of, I, I guess the other thing is that we, because we're so involved in our businesses, we're also not like the CEOs of some giant companies who like without these financial reports would have no idea mm-hmm. earplugs were even being purchased, right? Like we're the ones buying all this stuff usually, like, so uh, it, it's, again, the, the kind of association between what sort of information is just naturally already in your brain because you're going through the, the steps of doing all this stuff may overshadow how specific you need your your finances to be. You know, like the government, when you turn your taxes in, they're not looking for a line item about earplugs. So yeah. This is really business information for you when you're going to that level of depth. Um, I mean, we do like to, so we we have things like float supplies. We have things like um, software subscriptions. We have a lot of software subscriptions, so we like to categorize those. Obviously, payroll and all that stuff is is categorized by itself. Uh, we try to keep track of repairs and maintenance and figure out how much, you know, general construction and stuff like that is costing us versus like a big construction project that we have to, that we have to deal with. And... Um, I mean, when, when we put out our, we do like a monthly thing where we post our finances on our logbook for our chef, our star, our, uh, shop staff. Thanks to see, <laughs> <laughs> um, we should just edit you and saying other words throughout my sentences, sentences. <laughs> um, uh, and, and when we post that up, we're basically posting our total expenses. We have kind of our administrative costs bundled into one number. So lawyers, you know, gas for a company vehicle, bookkeepers, our software subscriptions, all that we kind of cover as admin costs. We put uh, we put how much went out for payroll. We put how, how much went out in rent. We put how much went out in repairs and maintenance and like kind of construction upkeep. And we have a category called everything else. And that's pretty much when we break it down for people just generally to see. That's kind of how simple we're making yeah, it. Yeah, marketing, advertising dollars um, also would go in that that list. Uh, we don't spend a lot on <laughs> on marketing or advertising, but a normal business and float center would would put that in there. And on the income side, we break things down a little more detailed, but it's mainly because a float center doesn't have a huge variety of income. You know, so yeah. there's there's one off floats. There's uh, you know, if you want to, you could say one off discounted floats might be a, a subcategory versus full price floats of that. There's memberships, and you might as well just break it down per membership type that you have. Again, because you have so few sources of income, definitely track which of your memberships is is best performing. And that's like, I, I consider those things a little bit different because those are kind of just happening for us. Like, your income is being tracked through whatever software you're using. Well, well right. But, and, uh, you know, to a certain extent, it seems, I think, normal to us. But retail shops that center around retail, like, all of a sudden, they have the same questions for expenses of how deep do I want to get for the categories of retail that I'm selling and what's going on and, you know, general reporting and stuff like that. Sure. I, I, think, like, I just mean, like, there's, there's, it takes us no more time to get extremely detailed income yeah, reports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're not putting those numbers in anywhere. Right, like we're just generating graphs out of our software where the data already exists, mm-hmm. as opposed to like when you're doing this for for us for the context of a float center with expenses, like you're literally saying I'm going to pay a bookkeeper twice as much time to get this finer level of accuracy or detail. Yeah. So yeah, income income is it's kind of nicer. It's easier to track and it's easier to get nice detailed reports on. Yep. And then there's gift cards and and you know different types of gift cards and then retail. And, you know, general retail categories. The nice thing is, again, your software will make it really easy to pull up other details. So we kind of don't need to go into incredible depth with categorizing um, even our retail at Float On. Because if we do have questions, spending just a little bit of time in the helm, we can pretty much answer all of them about what products are performing best, specifically what color of color therapy glasses is selling the best. You know, that doesn't need to be its own item on the chart of accounts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess, you know, in, in general, it might be worth talking about just some of the system we have in place for finances, which I think saves some, like gives you a better chance of getting more details without costing as much time, which is nice. 
Uh, so like one thing we do is, you know, I mean, we have these kind of very different projects, like our shop versus, you know, floating solutions or the helm. And we've actually set up different bank accounts for each of those. And that way they're just like naturally, the expenses are pre-filtered for us because we just use the right card in the right setting. So if you have something you're doing that's significantly different than your shop, like if you have your shop and you're doing some other like big project. Or like running classes in a spare room or workshops or something. Yeah, like that could be one thing you do that is really uh, easy on the front end because you're just using the right card and then, then all the expenses naturally get sorted from there. And then from there, what we use is a, a piece of software that we can take photos of our receipts or email our digital receipts to. We use one called Receipt Bank. Uh, that that we can put in the show notes that uh, then does an OCR scan, which is op- optical character recognition, I think. Uh, so it's it's just trying to take the photo and actually pull the text from it and automatically figure out you know the place you you went to and how much money you spent and what card was used and stuff like that. And it's not perfect, but it saves a good amount of typing time for whoever's dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. And then most most accounting software like QuickBooks will be able to tie into your bank account and give just a feed of transactions from your bank account go in there. And for us, we just then take the information that's now in our receipt bank, that's all of our receipts, and we push it to QuickBooks, and then we link, link those two things together. And we have a nice, you know, our receipts were mostly filled out without us typing in anything. Our bank feeds filled out without us typing in anything. There's a photo of our receipt automatically attached to the transaction and most of what we're doing is just kind of putting things in the right category. Answering questions, or like, tracking yeah. down missing, missing And sometimes data. QuickBooks and Receipt Bank, even, you know, they make guesses at that, and sometimes they're right. So even that can be a little bit automated. Okay, I feel, I feel good about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, good, good question. And again, like, everyone's circumstances are different, but I, I think the, the, if there's a main takeaway here, it's that we are not running a incredibly crazy business. And although the instinct might be to know every little thing that's going on, I think sacrificing some of that in exchange for understandable simplicity and getting more information on the items that you know are the big levers in your business, payroll, attendant, like capacity, right. you know, like average discount given, those are the numbers that are more worth fi- focusing on in your finances rather than breaking it down to things like Q-tips. Yeah. Okay, well, join us soon. Yeah, yeah, real soon. couple days. Um, if you have more questions, I mean... that's This is sorry. the time to ask them. The live episode will be... That's it, you know? <laughs> that's it. So, the 29th. Fascinating. The 29th, 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah. See you all there. Okay. You too. You're, nice. Yeah, you have to be there. Oh, so. cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, I'll be there.